Hey everybody. All right. Ready to keep working on those nature journal inserts. One thing I realized is that um, all the things I like to put in the nature journals that I would like, it's hard to remember them. So I've come up with uh, in this to start saying what I want to put. Like I would put lace cloth tabs at the top to attach with buttons. This is about those pockets I did yesterday or the day before, uh, the playing cards that I did yesterday, um, stuff like that. So just kind of my ideas, what I want to do. Um, so I'm going to use this as my nature journal idea book. Okay, so I printed off a bunch of these at work today. Um, <coughs> these are all free printables. If you go to the olddesignshop.com, I will try and remember to put the link below. <coughs> but who knows? I just said I, I'll try. I, I know how I, how I am. <laughs> but anyway, you can, there's a whole bunch of free vintage printables because they're not like under copyright anymore. And um, what I do is I print them, I pull them up, and I print four to a page so that um, I can get the size I want, you know, for journaling cards. It's pretty much the perfect size. So I got these, I'll show you the owls. So I put I like one of every owl in each journal just because I like them so much and they print so nicely. And it's so cute, oh my goodness. I love this one, it's one of my favorites. Okay, and then there were some other prints and they didn't print as good, but I think um, I can still use them. There were some owls, so there were these two owls, this one and this one. It didn't really print clear. Um, and I think it was an old design shop. It would have been that or freevintageprints.com. Either of those two you can go to. This might have been the free vintage prints. So probably it wasn't as clear as the old design shop. But I have a bunch of birds and I can still, I'm not worried, I'll, I'm still gonna use them. Let me see if all the rest were flowers. I think so. Um, this was butterflies, but again, it didn't print clearly, and um, so I, you know, I don't know why on that, why that website didn't print, because see, like those berries all ran together. So I wasn't as happy, um, I did this the wrong size, I wasn't as happy with these um, as I am with the old design shop. I feel like the old design shop had um, really, really good graphics. Like they're really easy, good for printing. So yeah, just one of those things. Well, I thought um, I, I have some ideas of things I want to work on. And so I was thinking about um, the journaling cards that would go, or the journaling papers. Usually I like to stick in a paper or a card to write on, okay? So for journaling, either way. So I had these, uh, a pack of travel uh, papers, and they're clear, you know, they're white on the back. And I thought that possibly some of these would work for some of that. I have to, I'm not sure which. And then I pulled out a couple sheets of my coffee stained papers that I want to uh, back um, to these two pictures. Okay, so this is the Janet Marsh Nature Diary. Um, and I just love the illustrations in it. And I do use it quite a bit um, in the book, in my journals. So um, this is actually two, I got in two of these books. And I chose these two. I chose this nest. I absolutely love it, this. And then I was looking, I originally chose this, but then I saw this and I just fell in love with this. So I, I was thinking if I put, I could put it on the back of this one, but this is rather, um, it seems dark, you know? 
it seems like a little bit lighter would be better. And I'm mostly concerned that this part shows, and I am going to stitch around it. Um, and then I will stamp, do a little bit of stamping. But the main thing is, um, if I'm gonna stitch, I want to just make sure it holds down. And let's just try and put it exactly on here. I do like having like that little bit of extra paper left over too. That's always um, nice. I can use that um, for something else. So then all I have to do is trim off what uh, the overflow. So let's do that because I will fold this up after it is stitched. Um, I'm going to save that little piece. And I want this to look nice, so I am going to take that piece off. And there's a couple of feathers on here, so I might as well just, um, or there's a feather, so I might as well keep that piece and that. Oh, I'd like to keep the scraps of this sort of thing. Okay, so that'll be perfect. So then what I do is I stitch and I distress. I fold it in three and then I tuck it in an envelope. Okay, so this one, I suppose it makes the, this is what I want. And I think I need to place it almost in the middle. Maybe what I'll do is I'll take off a little bit of this so that I know where I want that paper to run. Okay. So that, I think, is, yeah. It's practically exactly where it needs to be, which is kind of nice. There, just a few. And I want to, let's get that evened up at the top. And then it should be, see, then I don't have very much that I have to take off. Let's just even it here. Okay, there we go, a little piece of paper. And then I'm going to just take off some of this right here and there we go yeah and I like how that looks so I'm gonna just set that aside for now um, and then when I fold this so what you can I'll do is I'm gonna fold it like this so that when I slip it in, hopefully that's going to show. It's kind of the idea. So I'm just gonna set those aside. I wanna do the tabs. Um, I picked out what I wanna do for the tabs because I didn't wanna get too frilly, so I just did more plain crochet type laces. So the blues, each uh, signature gets two. This one. I got this eyelet and this one. So really all I have to do, um, I've used a nylon, a heavy duty nylon thread um, for this. And I'm just gonna get my buttons. Here are my buttons, okay? And I just want to match um, like I've got a colored buttons, but I didn't want to use colored buttons. And I got metal. These are like metal buttons, which I do like, but I prefer my metal buttons for decorating. So I'm gonna go over here, and I'm just thinking that um, the yellow, I mean, it's quite yellowed, um, would look, that's a brown button, get on there, at least for that one. So, because whatever you get, you do want to see the button. So I have to kind of, okay, so I think, 
Let me look at my other buttons and see what I've got. Oh, I do like that. Let's do these two. Okay, so one, two. Now let's go with this pretty color. I love this. And I think um, I'm kind of tempted. Just these are like, I love this. I'm just figuring out which button I think would look cool on this. Um, oops, come on, because you're the one I want. There we go. Those two are the same, but I like the way they look. Okay. And then we have this um, pretty eyelet. Definitely more delicate. And do I want just a one? No, because you know the white's not going to show. <laughs> Look at that. That was kind of fun, but not for this. All right. Um, let me look at my metal. I do like my metal buttons a lot. Look at that one. Oh, that one is so pretty. I like it. And let's find another metal. There's a metal one. I like those too. Let's go with those. And now I have this. And I really do like this. And I have a bunch of these. And I kind of like this. But I can also use white because this is blue. I can use white or a clear. Like here's a really pretty. This is a really pretty white. And let me see if I have another white. Ooh, that's really pretty too. Yeah, you know what? I think I like, I think white. But do I want, that's too big. Um, hmm. Just trying to find the right one. How about that? Ooh, yes, this one's perfect. And I'm not totally sold on this. Yeah, and that's why, because there are a couple other cho choices. Oh my goodness, why does it be hard? I think that one. But then, I don't know, that one. It's got like a little swirl to it, almost like a flower. All right, wow, we're making progress. Okay, so, I think I'm gonna put one of the blue ones in here. And I think the other one will be one of these. Yeah. So this is really simple. You just pick two spots. So I'm going to pick um, this Elizabeth Holden page. And actually, I think maybe I'll just do it on the Elizabeth, both of them. And you just make sure you put them in um, separate spots. So I just like it because the blue. I just feel like it goes with it. So this is where I'm going to have it. And um, let me pull my thread because I do have a long piece of thread ready. And it looks like there's some other thread attached. It doesn't go with this. <laughs> ah, make it a mess. Come on, I don't want to have to cut this. Why is this acting so weird? So strange. It's like the piece that should not be attached is attached. This is so strange. Guys, I don't even know what I did. <laughs> Don't know. Now I'm just gonna cut it off. Oh, so ridiculous. Okay, anyway. So now that's what I got. Um, and I am going to just make that a little better knot. There we go. I think I'm happier with that. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Um, 
because I want it hidden a little bit. I'm just going to come through first. So that leaves this here. And um, so this is how I want. I just kind of figure where I want it, okay? Like my tab. Sticking up that far is probably sufficient. Um, I'm going to put my button here that I want. And I'm just going to come up into my button, okay? All right, and then now it needs to go all the way through. So it comes back here. And I really like this. Uh, on my first one that I made was the one for myself. And, um, oops, I actually um, sewed it on across with the machine, just sewed the tabs across. Um, let me show you on mine. This is mine. Um, I just sewed the tabs on, machine sewed, and I just feel like I didn't get them on really good, you know. So um, I didn't want to do that. And so when I made my last one, which was also for the shop, I discovered that um, I really liked it sewn on with a button because I can control it okay so once I've gone through three times when I come back through instead of coming through the hole I'm kind of come through here's a button I'm gonna come through here and this is how I was taught to give strength to your buttons when you sew them on so you go around two or three times go back through um, and now to sew under, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come under this right here, okay? Alright, so now everything is underneath. So bring this tab up a little bit and just hold it and then come through here and just to do your knot, just go through, like leave a loop and go through it. So just like this, go through the same spot again. And it's not like you're buttoning and unbuttoning anything. This is gonna stay. It's not, it's not coming off. Believe me. <laughs> and then just trim that off. Let me get a smaller scissor. Instead of that great big scissor, which I don't need. Okay, so then you just trim that off and fold that back down and you have a very cute little button strap. And because this is more or less in the middle of my um, insert, I'm going to go ahead and do the second one over here and I'm going to do it right about here when I do this one. So it's going to be on the end. Now the way that I tie my knots was something also that my mother taught me. Um, I don't know like how other people do it, but this is what I do. I make a loop of the thread around my finger and then I take that end here so that it's going to go under like this and I roll it <laughs> and then I pull it down and I have a knot. And that's how I learned to do knots. Okay, so let's see, where do I want this? Because I want to make sure I have a decent enough tab coming over, okay? So if I'm going to have, I need to have a little bit of a tab sticking up. This is a much shorter tab, as you can see. So let's go like that, find my button, and I guess I'll just put it through the button. Probably be easier, right? There we go. So now I'm going to hold that and just make it, you know, so it's not too crooked because I do tend to get a little crooked at times. 
I admit. Okay, I'll make sure I am catching. I don't like where I'm catching my thread. It's like it needs to be up a little higher, I think. There we go. Just want to make sure I catch it on the right spot. It's just the first time you go through, you do have to kind of be careful. <laughs> Sometimes I have trouble finding where I want to go in. Okay, so now it should stay really good. I shouldn't have to worry about it. Okay, that's the second time through. Now let's go. Come on. Okay. And third time. All right. Perfect. Okay. And now I'm going to come up. Now, I granted, I could do a button on each side, but um, I don't want to, so... One button, you get one button. So you just come up really close to that button. Wrap it around, one, two, three. Go back down into the back. Um, hopefully up a little higher than I went because I didn't go up high enough. Um, come on. I feel like I'm having some issues back there. Okay. All right, so this one, I just feel like I need to tack it down a little bit better over here. Now that's better. I just felt like it wasn't um, tacked down very well on that side. So now I feel much better about it. Okay, so I'm just going to lift up this corner um, instead of the whole thing. And make sure you get your loop, your needle through the loop, because that will make your knot tight. And you just do that twice. And this really is how I learned. My mom taught me how to sew. Okay. There we go. So now we have two, and so I just put this back. Oh my gosh, my eye itches. Oh, oh, excuse me. I know you're not supposed to rub your eye when it itches. All of a sudden, it just like itched. <laughs> okay. Um, I should take care of this because seriously, this just keeps bothering me because it's too. Um, it's too tall. It's bugging me keeps like just gonna get all ratty on the top if I don't cut that. Okay, now, now this should work. That's better. Goodness, that was really bugging me. <laughs> Can you tell? Okay, there. Okay, so now on the top of this insert, we have a tiny bit of this twine from my tag. We have this little cute little one and then we have the blue one sticking up a little bit further that's the first one here's the next one and let's put that on maybe Peter Rabbit I, I kind of try to find the sturdier the sturdier pages for doing this um, here's another option but this doesn't go to the top so not only does do I want it to be sturdy but it needs to go all the way to the top like this one does so let's do this one and let's change up we're going to do this I love how this little button kind of matches the carrot that's kind of cute okay I think I have a piece of yep I think I have one that's not attached yep I do because now the thread that's left in there oh and I double my thread over too I do um, I just bring it down here. So I'm always working with a double thread. I sew that way too. So make a loop, 
tuck that through just a little bit. Go like that to twist it and bring it down into a knot. Super easy, guys. It is super easy. All right. And we're going to go this one kind of like this. This one is so cute. I'm going to put my button right in the middle. Now this button has four holes. I guess I have a couple buttons that have the four holes. So let's um, do, there we go. And then I have to put this down now. There. Oh my goodness. This one is going to be so cute. I love this one. So I'm just going to do it in X's, I think, if I can manage to find the place where it needs to go through. Come on. You just have to kind of just do it, you know, by feeling, and it means I don't always, come on, find it. Here, where were you? There we go. So since this is an X, I'm just going to do each one twice. Okay. Oh, I like this one so much, you guys. Just really like this one. And here's the next one. And come on. There we go. Okay, let me take a look at this. Yep, this is looking pretty good. I kind of feel like it's getting a little bit away from me over here. So I think when I go up um, here, I want to make sure I'm catching that part of the material. So let's see. Yep. Now I feel like I've caught it good. So we'll just go around um, the button with the thread a couple times. Well, three. I just do three. And come back down here. And then we can make our knot. And I still feel like I need to kind of bring this together. Like... there because I still feel like that could use a little bit better help there now I feel better about it okay so now I just flip up a little piece of it so I can catch it under to make my little knot like this knot number one and then knot number two okay then we have our second one done. And I don't know if I have enough to do the next button. But I try to stagger them a little bit so that um, they're going to be not only staggered this way, but when this is in this one, you know, it's somewhat, there's going to be enough papers between the two. It'll be fine. And then the next one I wanted to use, I want to use this. And since this is up here, we're going to put this one over here. And that's going to be just like this. So we'll just kind of get it, get it all set and hold it in place. This one also has four. And pull it through. And now this is much tinier. Um, smaller piece. So I have to be careful that I am actually catching it. Probably going to run out of thread. So we might not do as many on this one. So I 
don't want to have any issues of this not want to be able to tie this <laughs> the other two I'm just going to do off camera but I thought I would do two of these inserts in your presence we'll just do two we're going to go back through here And then we're going to go under, oops, <laughs> under this way, not that way. Okay. And then I just need to do that to make my little knots because there we go. Oops. I don't think I went through that one. What did I do? I'm going to take it out because if you don't do it right, I'm going to end up with a knot where I don't want to knot, and that would not make me happy. Okay, one. Here comes number two. But yeah, you can see why you want um, very um, firm, why you want firm paper for something like this. You don't want flimsy paper. I think it could just, you know, tear too easily, and you certainly don't want that happening. Okay, so this, so let's put this back in and see what this one looks like. And like this, and I saw the twine, there it is. <laughs> this will be up a little higher in here, and there the twine will be showing, coming through a little bit at the top. So there we go, two more. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and do the last two. And maybe I'll sew around these two pieces of paper too, so you can see what that looks like. I'll be back. Okay, um, I have the stitching done. And before my bobbin ran out, because my bobbin almost ran out. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cute tabs. Okay, and then this is uh, stitched on here and on here, and I love the sound. And I'm going to distress this one, but I'm going to do this one in blue because of the blue. So, let me get my blue pad. Take off that brown one, I'll put on the blue, and we'll just... Cause see, oh, with the blue eggs, isn't that amazing? Oh, I love it. I love it so much. This is probably the one I'll put in the glassing bag, I think. Oh, except I would like it to poke through, so. Mm. But I want it to show, because this is really pretty, I want this one to show through. I guess we'll see. We'll see. Let's... And I'll be doing some stamping on here too, but I wanted to show you one that is done. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. All right. We will stick that back in here. I hope I can find some pink distress ink. It's kind of my wish. And this one will be brown just because there's so much brown in this one already. I'm still thinking through how I want to decorate, like do the collage on the outside of the bags. So I haven't decorated those at all. I haven't pulled anything to decorate them because I'm not sure yet. And I'm kind of like getting this part done too because this would give me some direction for two of them anyway of like what type of thing I might want. 
as my collage. For instance, I want my birds, eggs, and feathers on that one. And this one, since it's a cattail, will probably be more botanical. I'm thinking I have all that time off. Um, well, it's not like it's so much time, but it's a good amount of time. I might coffee stain some more papers. I really need to get more writing papers for coffee staining, I think, too, because I do tend to use those a lot. Okay, so here's the two bags that these would go into. So this really, or at least this one for sure, this is why I thought this, but now I have changed my mind because I think, well, I have the blue egg even showing. It's hard to say, but we are going to fold it like this. All right, and let's just take the bone folder and Go ahead and fold that good. And then we want to make sure it fits, but you don't want it too snug. You want it just about like that, I think. I think this would work. All right, so we'll just give that a little fold like this, and then you can see where my eggs are. Um, they're not going to show. I really wanted them to show, and they are not going to show. It's going to stick up a little, though, so I will see the blue, which I like. And there's a teeny tiny glimmer of an egg. So that's where that one goes. And then um, I would probably um, put a card in here. This um, would probably be good with a card. There is a chance I could fold this one up and put it in here. If I fold it, it would just be so folded so thinly to just get it in there, you know what I mean? But let's just see. If I folded it like this, If I did this, let's see if we can do it. Okay, I'm gonna try. This one got a lot more crinkly, as you can see, it's a lot looser. And we just know that it needs to be like this, right up to the edge, right up to the edge. Make sure, okay. There we go. I think that actually is going to work out nicely. Let's see. We did it not too tight. And it sticks out a little, which is good. Much easier to pull out if it's sticking out. Yeah, so I probably will do that. We shall see.